What's going on guys, Asian Guy here bringing you a video discussing which parts you should be pulling on for the 4 year anniversary Sugo Fest on the Japan server of One Piece Treasure Cruise and to the side is a list of all the free legend mails or all the free legends available in the free legend mail that we've just got on the Japan server as well and I'll be discussing which legends you should be looking to pick. So let's begin and just a quick disclaimer this is not on global this is on Japan a few people are confused in my comments section these days global and Japan are two separate games. Global is a few months behind Japan but anniversaries on Global always happen in February so February 2019 for those of you Global players wondering when this will happen from Japan to Global it will probably be around that time. So the free legend mail let's get into it guys. We've got Jinbei, Zoro, Sabo, Fujitora, V1 Luchi, V1 Boa and of course V1 Shanks. Now all of these legends have six pluses other than Fujitora and if you can six plus them then I would say it's pretty much in this order that you want to pick them as legends. Even so Fujitora doesn't have a six plus I would still say he's a better captain or more stable captain than having for example V1 Luchi, Boa Hancock or Shanks there because those three are really dead legends even with leeching they still struggle incredibly whereas with V1 Fujitora if you leech with him you can still leech on a V2 Dofi and it's actually not a bad combination there but let's begin with the Jinbei batch. So Jinbei is the fighters batch. I would say Hack and Luffy are not that great as rare fits effect. In fact, you're probably never ever going to use them. There's very rarely a time they're ever up. In fact, they're never optimal and therefore you're probably never going to use them. But on the other hand, you've got Koala who has a very nice limit break and you've also got Senor Pink who's also very good on a free spirit team. So Jinbei, Koala and Senor Pink together, those three units are actually very good if you can 6 plus Jinbei that is. If you can't 6 plus Jinbei, do not pick this batch because Jinbei is an absolute rubbish captain if you cannot 6 plus him. Zoro. Now Zoro's batch, I have to say, is pretty much garbage. It's by far the worst batch out of all of these other than himself being one of the the better legends available here, Abdullah and G is good for speed running. Dikshigi, rarely ever going to use her because there's just not enough space and for a 1.5 times color affinity boost, it's not that amazing. She's also Cerebra and there are better color affinity boosts for Cerebra as well. Slayman, not useful at all. There's one piece of content where he was mildly useful. I believe this was for the ranking Blackbeard we had recently, but outside of that, not too amazing. We've also got Dagama, who I have to say is really not that useful whatsoever. Now, the free spirit batch, if you have any free spirit leads, V2 Rayleigh, Time Skip Luffy, Luffy X Ace, then you absolutely must pick this. You do not, no contest. Don't even be tempted by any other batch. This is the best batch to pick if you do not have 6 plus Sabo, if you do not have 6 star Sabo, but you have V2 Rayleigh, you have Time Skip Luffy, or you have Luffy X Ace, and you ever use them, if you use them regularly especially, you must pick this batch. No questions asked whatsoever, pick this batch. Sugar is useful, Sugar is actually useful right now for Kaiboa. That Garp is not that useful anymore, but in Bangkok and Time Skip Brook, both of them super good units, super useful rare recruits. No questions asked, this is one of the better batches or one of the best batches available from the free Legend Mail. Now you've got Fujitora. If you have V2 Dofi or you have Judge, Fujitora is not a bad shout if you have Powerhouse Legends as well. He's also not a bad shout if you don't have Fuji. And as I said, we don't have a 6 plus infamy. We don't have un we don't have information on a 6 plus for him. But if he does get a 6 plus, I think it's safe to say he's going to be somewhere like a 3 times flat attack boost with a flat 1.5 times HP boost, which is just like Jinbei, just like Zoro 6 pluses. And that would be very solid in itself, especially if you pair it up with a V2 Dofi friend. And that's actually not a bad combination. You get tankiness and you get better orb manipulation or orb beneficial manipulation if you guys get what I mean. Diamante is a fantastic rare recruit to have during anniversary events because his special basically gets rid of every single mob stage for like four turns and it makes your run so much faster especially when you're trying to speed run stuff and we are going to have the max special ship during the anniversary and that's what I meant by he's very good during anniversaries this is why you want to have Diamante. If you don't have Diamante then you might want to consider this but if I mentioned previously as I mentioned previously if you have a free spirit batch and you have free spirit captains, you want to pair them together, so definitely go for that one. Cesar Rare Recruit is not a bad unit, but he's definitely not a fantastic unit. His cooldown is way too high to be really optimal anymore. He's still viable, but definitely not optimal. Giola, if you need a belly boosting captain, then go for go for this batch. Not a bad batch to go for. And Treble is not too bad, but neither is he great either as a rare recruit. The powerhouse batch is actually pretty good when it comes to the subs, but when it comes to the legend itself. 
B1 Luchi, very outdated legend. He's not really viable for anything. He can still clear medium difficulty stuff, but when it comes to hard content, if you don't have a V2 Luchi friend, then you're really gonna struggle. Double V1 Luchi is pretty much redundant. Six turns of, you know, you're kind of wasting your turns there by waiting out six turns of higher orb rate. It's a really bad special, basically. He is not a very good legend anymore. And, well, I don't think he ever was, but V1 Luchi, disliking aside, Time skip Sanji, fantastic, fantastic Reroku, one of the best in the game. I can't wait for him to get a limit break. I can't wait for what it's gonna be. Hopefully there's even more cooldown reduction, which would make him really, really insane. But time skip Sanji, a superb powerhouse unit, superb fighter unit, and in fact the superb orb booster for all you all teams because he's a rainbow or booster. Do not forget about Time Skip Sanji. We've also got Time Skip Quick Chopper, who's not a bad unit, but neither is he amazing. He's not too bad for quick teams, but outside of that, nothing too special. We've got Rare Recruit Marco, who still has some uses, giving that max HP heal, but he does not give overflowed HP healing, which is very useful for people like Legend and Nell. But outside of that, Marco still is very good for super tanky teams. And you've got Blue No as well, who is a 1.75 times attack booster for powerhouse units. Again, nothing amazing, but not too bad either. But if you have Raid Sanji, he's a little bit redundant unless you need in powerhouse beat sticks that do something useful as well. The Quick Boa Batch, Quick Boa I don't think needs any introduction as to being one of the worst captains in the game. Not too bad as a sub anymore, but as a captain, not that amazing. We've also got Khalifa in here and Gladius, two decent quick units. Not that great anymore because Khalifa as a damage reducer is dependent on your HP, which is not that amazing. And there's different varying tiers of damage reduction, which is okay-ish. Her limit break is not great, but not bad either. We've got Gladius, whose limit break makes his captain a flat 2.75, which is actually better than Boa Hancock's, unsurprisingly, because Boa Hancock's is so bad for a legend. But Gladius doesn't have a bad special 20% HP cut, makes his own orb quick but then again it's not that useful either you, you find you know that you want to have more relevant more better specials instead of changing one orb into matching the 20% HP cut though is of course very nice however this is where this batch gets very very good is man cherry and 20 year Sanji both of them I believe cure poison and they're just very good utility units, whereas Sanji is a, is a fantastic orb booster. Rainbow orb booster, 1.75 times. I believe he has a 10%, in fact, a 15% HP cut on a single enemy. He is a very, very good unit. I'm tempted to pick this batch because I have every single unit on this list already. I do want to get that skill up for Sanji. We still don't have 20 year anniversary skill books, which is super, super annoying. Really, really annoying, Bandai. Can we please get those skill books? I would love to have this Sanji max skilled he is a super useful unit so i would again reiterate he he is one to look at and consider if you have every single legend and you don't have that 20 year sanji you should definitely consider this batch now shanks's batch is by far the worst in the game probably only useful for v2 kuzan owners but shanks 6 plus very much a dead legend i'm sorry shanks 6 plus fanboys but he is a dead legend you got frankie there not that useful he's okay on a v2 kuzan team but Nothing too special, realistically speaking. Duval, not useful. Chopper, not useful. Monet, very, very situationally useful. But outside of that, again, not that useful. You'll find better alternatives to use. And out of all of these, as I would say, if you have any free spirit leads, any good ones at the least, definitely go with Sabo. If you have V2, Dofi, and Judge, go with Fujitora. If you have any of the good slashers, well, the only good slasher captain, I would say right now, or the only amazingly good slasher captain, V2 Fujitora, then definitely go for Zoro. But if you want anything that's stable, that's going to be pretty much future-proof for the next six months, I would go with Jinbei if we can 6 plus him. I think a lot of stuff is going to be geared towards Fighter in the future, so 6 plus Jinbei is going to help you out a lot. But outside of that, guys, take a look at the rare recruits. Let me know in the comment section which one you will be picking, and hopefully that has been helpful for you guys. And remember, do not pick this mail or do not open this mail and select your legend until after you've done your Sugo Fest pulls. Last year, so many times, even on Global as well, people kept picking their legends their free legends and then putting them dupe during the Sugo Fest and started complaining. You have no right to complain about pulling dupes if you decide to open this mail right now, pick a legend and then proceed and pull him as a dupe or pull her as a dupe later on in the Sugo Fest. No complaining guys, do not have some self-control, just have some self-control, wait till after the Sugo Fest, there's a long time before this expires. 
if I have read correctly, actually I can't find the information, but I believe at the very least till the end of this month, maybe halfway through till next month, you can keep this mail and just wait. Just please, please, please do not open this mail until after you've done your Sugo Fest, especially if you're a new player. Otherwise, if they're all old units to you and you have all of them, then think about Limit Break. If you're looking for Limit Break batches, I would probably say the Free Spirit one is the better one. Sugar, Ivankov, Time Skip Brook. Only Time Skip Brook has a Limit Break there, but Sugar and Ivankov might get some good, rare, uh, good Limit Breaks, so do keep that in consideration. The Powerhouse one is decent as well, as is the Quick one, the Quick Boa one. So yeah, keep that in consideration. Thank you guys for watching this part. Let's go into which part you should be looking at for the Sugo Fest. I will see you in a moment. Bye-bye. Alrighty guys, let's get into which part you should be pulling on for this three part Sugo Fest. Now part one has all pools will be gold or red. So two times legend rate up means you have a decent chance of pulling a legend. If you have a hundred gems, you're definitely going to pull at least one legend, which is very, very nice. Every two multis on part one will guarantee you a legend. That's right, you heard me correctly, up for 20 multis at the very least. If you do 20 multis after 20 multis, there's no more guaranteed legends, but up till 20 multis, every single two multis you do will guarantee you a free, well not a free legend, but a plus one poster that is going to be red and therefore a legend. Now the fourth multi will guarantee a straw hat without Log Luffy. Now at first I speculated that Log Luffy will be in this, but he's not. Bandai know he's rubbish and nobody wants him anymore. And therefore they've stripped him from this straw hat batch. And as you can see here, all of these legends are good. At the very least, they are good. Now, Zoro and Sanji, I would say, are good. And Usopp is niche, but he's also good. Outside of those three, they're very, very good. Now, Time Skip Luffy, I would say, is very good because you can pair him up with, obviously, the new Luffy. But outside of that, you've got Frankie, Nami, Luffy x Ace, Robin, and the new G4 Luffy, who are all insanely powerful captains right now in the current meta and for many months to come. I would say those guys are superbly strong. They're super safe. They're super brain dead to use and just OP legends. So Luffy x Ace, Time Skip Frankie, Legend or the Megazord Frankie, and you've also got Robin, Nami, and the new G4 Luffy. All of them, if you pull any of them, you should be very happy if it's the first time you're pulling them because they are all overpowered. Now the 10th multi will guarantee one of the following, the new Luffy, Luffy x Ace, Nami, Dofi or Lucy. Now all of these are insanely good legends. The best legends in the game or some of the best legends in the game. Obviously Luffy, the newest one, I don't think it's any competition that he is the best legend captain in the game. I think it's, you just look at the captain ability, look at what he does, you look at his special, you can instantaneously tell this guy is the most busted unit in the game right now. And if I pull him, I, I really hope I can pull him. I'll be very, very happy. Nami, one of the most busted subs in the game. If I pull her, I'll be super happy as well. Luffy x Ace and Dofi, if I pull another dupe, I'm okay with because, and I'm speaking as if I'm gonna do 10 multis, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe I will do 10 multis. I don't know how many multis I'm gonna be doing yet. Take a prediction in the comment section down below. But Luffy x Ace, super OP right now as well. Dofi V2, I would say probably Dofi V2 is the weakest captain out of all of these because while he is very strong and can do tons of damage, if you don't have his batch, for newer players at the least, he's gonna be very difficult to use. But if you have 10 multis, I'm assuming you're not a newer player and hopefully you have his full driven batch. Lucy is a very future-proof captain as well. Every single dex, every single quick, every single strength unit that comes out, or almost every single one will be super useful to him. Sadly though, Nami, this new Nami doesn't work on Lucy and it seems like that was just taking shots at Lucy, unfortunately. And also you can't use this Nami on a Dofi team either because she's not a driven type, even though she does boost driven orbs and color affinity. That's a little bit, little bit tilting, but 10th multi is superb. And also you've got other gimmicks for the 6th, the 12th, the 14th, the 16th, the 18th, and 20th multi. But if you're going that far, I'm sure you've already done your research and you know what's gonna go down. So let's look at the part one rate ups. These are the legends rated up on part one. You've got the new Nami, the new Luffy, Frankie, you've got V2 Rayleigh, V2 Fuji, you've got Judge, Lucy, V2 Luchi, V2 Boa, Magellan, Holy Jones, Time Skip Luffy, Kizaru, Corazone, and Akainu. Now, all of these legends, other than Kizaru, and Corazone, I would say, are still very, very, very solid legends. Kizaru 6 Plus 
is not bad. With the new Limit Break, Corazon is actually a very good sub now. His cooldown goes down to an extremely low amount. He has the cooldown Limit Break socket, which means he starts the quest or starts the adventure with like minus 10 cooldown, something stupid like that. But he is actually a very good sub now if you can Limit Break him. Akainu and Time Skip Luffy, the old but fallen gods. They used to be the best in the game, now nowhere near the best in the game. They're very, very far off, but still very strong legends, especially if you pair them up or you use them to leech. They're very solid legends. Holy Jones, if you can 6 plus him, one of the best legend speedrunners in the game to have if you want. And honestly speaking, all of these legends here, if you pull any of them, you should be pretty happy again, other than Kizaru and Corazon. I would understand if you're not too happy pulling them for the first time. V2 Boa, arguably the best shooter captain in the game, but sadly, V2 Boa is pretty much a dead well not v2 boa shooters are a dead class right now hopefully they get revived sometime soon but they're not doing too too great right now which is a bit of a shame but the first top five the five there in that row nami luffy frankie v2 rayleigh and fujitora if you pull any of them judge and lucy and v2 luchi as well all of them very very powerful legends this is a really really good day to pull on if you're looking for some strong legends and i forgot to mention guys Massive thank you to Reddit user Goldfisher as well, which is where I got all of these images from. Superb, superb graphic he created. I literally just copy and paste it onto my background and I just change the little things here and there. But otherwise, thank you so much Goldfisher as well. I forgot to mention that. But yes, part one, rate up legends, guys. Arguably the best day, arguably the best day. But let's look at the rare recruits. Now the rare recruits, Obviously the entire new batch is rated up on day one So I can't stress enough that if you do pull the new Luffy then you really want to go ham on his batch because his batch is very 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 good now the other rare recruits on here are a little bit questionable now you've obviously got 20 anniversary grip 20 anniversary chopper which are both kind of redundant units you've got Hanyabao who's really not that good people are always like yeah he's decent with Magellan but, you know, you could just use another conditional booster, but he's not that important to Magellan teams. You've got the Perona, who's okay. You've got Daruma, who's pretty decent, actually. But the big one here that I want to point out is Neptune. Now, if you don't have Neptune, regardless of your legends, I honestly think that pulling on part one is not a bad idea. Because if you pull Neptune, he is going to become one of your most used captains without question for every single Fortnite, every single easy raid, half stamina raid, double EXP raids that you can do with Neptune, you will be using Neptune. And it's going to be worth it. He is one of the most MVP units in the game, more useful than a ton of legends. Neptune, 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 I freaking bum him. I think a lot of people bum him and I, I think everyone would just recommend if you can get Neptune, do your best to try and get Neptune. Other useful units in here are, of course, Kuros, the new batch. Jesus Burgess, not that great. Cavendish, very situational. A lot of people thought he was amazing when he first came out, but when he first came out after a month, you barely ever see him ever used again, which is a little bit disappointing. But, you know, the Vanderdecken ship memes, no one really uses Vanderdecken ship to do hard pieces of content, so he is a little bit redundant for where he can be used. Driven and Slashers don't really have amazing defense reducers. So, you know, that synergized too well with him. So obviously you've got Bartow to synergize, but people aren't looking for damage reduction too much these days. They're looking for like HP cuts or manipulation, something like that. But yeah, the new batch, all of them are very good. Carrot is very good. Rebecca is not that useful. Kuros, if you have slashes, is okay-ish. I think slashes are kind of falling off a little bit right now, but they're still, you know, they're neither OP nor are they underpowered. But Kuros is pretty decent. People forget also, he's not just a 3 turn of 1.75 times attack. He actually reduces Bind and Despair by 3 turns as well, which is pretty common. So he's not bad to have as well. Diamante, I would say from that Lucy Karida Colosseum badge, is the best one. He's actually the most useful one. Lots of content where you actually need to have him. And lots of defense up or damage reduction from opponent memes. And he's the one that reduces all of them. He has a little bit of manipulation and he's got 2 turn delay as well, which is very, very nice. Time skip Nami, still one of the best subs in the game. Time skip Sanji, very good for speed running. Time skip Robin, if you pull the new Nami, you definitely want to have time skip Robin. She's a superb unit to have. And of course, if you have 6 plus Hody or you have V2 Luchi, then Daruma is a very solid, solid attack booster to have as well. But outside of that, let's move on to part 2 and part 3. Now, part 2 and part 3 have different bonuses 
on their respective dates. All pools, again, are gold or above, so red posters and gold posters only, two times legend rate up. And the second multi, instead of a guaranteed legend, will guarantee you Anniversary Sanji on part two and Anniversary Reiju on part three. Now the third and eighth multi will guarantee you a legend, any legend available, not just the rated up legends. The fifth and 10th multi guarantees any legend with max special, which is pretty damn solid. And the sixth and 12th multi will guarantee a rated up legend. So pay attention to the rate ups. Let's begin with part two. Now part two, oh man, part two means Three of the four legends I am missing will be available. So the only legends I'm missing right now, V2 Akainu, V2 Shanks, version 4 Luffy, the new gear 4 Luffy, and the new Nami. And boy, oh boy, this is the driven batch right here. But damn, I would love to get my hands on V2 Akainu, the new Luffy, and V2 Shanks. I'm probably going to go very hard in on part two. This is the day three out of four of the legends I'm missing are available here. I would like an uninvolved Dofi as well. Dofi V2 is obviously available here, but that top row, other than Anel, I'm sorry to the Anel fanboy that's on Reddit. I know he is a very big fan of Anel and he still hasn't got his hands on Anel. I wish you the best of luck, but Anel is a very much dead legend here. But on here, you've got Blackbeard, you've got Dofi V1, you've got Dofi V2, you've got Usopp, Marco, V2 Shanks, V2 Kainu, and the new Luffy. All of them are solid legends with the new Luffy. V2 Kainu, V2 Shanks, V2 Dofi, all being top tier legends. Superb captains that can pretty much clear everything in the game right now. And now if you pull him, other than that one guy, you're probably going to be very disappointed. He's not useful for anything. He's not optimal for anything. He's not the best at anything anymore. And he's just a very tedious legend to play with. Some people think he's fun. I respect that. I respect that people. I respect those people who look for fun in the game. But for me, fun in the game is clearing fast, clearing efficiently, clearing brain dead, and seeing my box improve over time. And yeah, that's fun for me. Hashtag paid to win. Dofi V1 still a very solid unit, especially if you have. Say you don't have V2 Dofi, but you still have, like, for example, Judge. V1 Dofi is still very solid. V1 Dofi still doesn't have a 6 plus as well, so that might see a massive improvement in him. Fingers crossed, because I really like V1 Dofi, especially on my Lucy team. you got Marco as well, who got a pretty decent limit break. His cooldown goes down to 16 now, and of course, that insane amount of healing can never be looked down upon. If you have 6 plus Jinbei, we have Fighter Captains, you definitely want to be considering this Marco as well. Blackbeard is always going to stay relevant because of his niche captain ability of being able to penetrate you know, any sort of barriers and any sort of defense up or whatever, it's still very useful. And you've obviously got Usopp, who I think over time is going to actually become more and more useful. His 6 plus version, which penetrates all forms of delay protection or debuff protection, can delay anyone, is very solid. Now, aside from that, you've got Bato. Bato is 6 plus, is not bad. Otherwise, not that useful as a sub anywhere. If you don't have any Driven or you don't have any Striker Captains, then Barto is still okay as a 6 plus unit. Cavendish is really dead now because of Lucy. Even pairing him up, it's just not optimal. He's just too weak of a legend to do anything difficult right now. But without further ado, let's go into the Rare Recruits. The Part 2 Raid Up Rare Recruits. Now I have to say, this batch of Rare Recruit units here are the worst of all of them. You've obviously got Pedro and Brooke who are great units and they synergize well, but if you want the new rare recruits, you've got to be pulling on part one. You've got a few driven units here to support for V2 Dofi, but outside of that, I honestly have to say, most of these units are pretty much redundant and they're never optimal for anything. You've got Bellamy who's hardly ever useful, you've got that Jinbei who's really not that useful. The 20 anniversary units on here, other than Sanji, I have to say rarely see any use. They're useful here and there as a bit of a gimmick, but outside of those gimmicky things, they're really not that useful. So Zoro, I know loads of people think he's an amazing captain, but he's only considered that because his captain is better than Sengoku as a legend. But Sengoku's captain is not really that amazing either, which means Zoro's captain, while it's good, it's not great, and you're really not ever going to use him over any of your legends, so... Zoro hype I think is a little bit dead now and you've got Bonclay, you've got Ivankov, Lamoria, Momonosuke, Kinemon, ne neither of all of them, 
not that great either. Unfortunately, they're really not that great. They're decent, but they're not amazing either. Whereas the Luchi there is actually very good. You got Treble, who's very good. Pika is very good as well. Sanji, very, very good. And you've got the Anniversary Shanks and Anniversary Sanji. Anniversary Shanks is available. He's not guaranteed anywhere. So if you want the Anniversary Shanks, he's not bad, but he's not amazing either. He heals you for 50% of your HP, which is decent, and changes your orbs into matching at the very bottom row. But outside of that, he doesn't do too much, and his cooldown, I believe, is like 17, which is very high, and he's obviously not ever going to get a limit break, so that's never coming down. So I would say the rare recruits on part 2 are really bad. What they have done cheekily, though, for part 2, the legends on part 2, they put four really overpowered legends there, four of the most wanted legends, the Akainu V2, the Shanks V2, and the V2 Dofi, and of course the new Luffy, in part 2, and they've just bashed it up with a ton of rubbish rare recruits that a lot of people already have and a lot of people don't want, especially the 20 anniversary units. I feel like a lot of people have them now. But if you're missing a lot of these units, then of course go ahead and pull for it. If you're only pulling for legends, guys, this Sugo Fest is going to be a bit of a trap for you guys. I hope it's not, but if you are going in with the mentality that you want to pull for specific legends, then you should expect a lot of bad rare recruits and a lot of bad multis, especially on part 2. This is the one downside of me going in on part 2, where while I do not have Ivankov, I believe this quick Ivankov that you see to the right hand side of your screen, is the only rare recruit I'm missing right now. It's still not a big deal if I pull him, her, whatever he wants or whatever she wants to be known as. If I pull Ivankov, it's not, you know, a massive, a massive thing to celebrate about. So, part two, outside of the Legends, unless you're a Mega Whale, please don't be pulling on part two just for Legends, because the rare recruits, honestly, are not that amazing. If you're missing a lot of them, then I understand, and you need them, then go for it. But otherwise, part two, I really cannot recommend, unless you, you're one of those crazy people like me, who are going to be pulling for these Legends. So yeah, part two, I have to say, is a bit of a bust. Part 3. Now part 3 is stacked with really good legends. Now all of these legends are very good as subs and also very good as captains. Now Nami obviously arguably if not the best sub in the game now. She's one of the best subs in the game. You've got V2 Kuzan, Luffy XA, solid captains. Robin the best or the second best cerebral captain after V2 Rayleigh. It depends situationally you know there's loads of good dex units for Cerebral, so often you don't want to be using V2 Rayleigh because you end up having like four dex units on your team. You've got Treasure Map Saba and you've got the rare recruit V2 Shirahoshi, not V2 Shirahoshi, the deck Shirahoshi. She's very good as a utility unit, so most often I find myself wanting to use Robin more than V2 Rayleigh as a captain. Now, you've got Lore there as well for Strikers. Nekomamushi has fallen off a bit, he's nowhere near as good as the newer legends. He's a conditional 0 times boost or 3.75 times boost, his special is not useful anymore compared to all of these other specials that basically give you full board orb manipulation, changes block orbs, gives you a boost on top of that as well, which is freaking busted. Neko Mamushi is still solid, he's just not amazing anymore. You've got Sanji as well. Again, he's solid, but not amazing. And then you've got Inu Arashi, who's actually creeping a bit back more into usefulness because of how busted Cerebral are as a class. And they've, you know, just been buffed massively by the Nami, who's a Cerebral Strike unit. She's actually very good on a Nekomamushi team as well. So it's good that both of them are put here together. And obviously, you've got Shirohoshi and you've got Kuzan as well as Ace. Now, Ace is probably the only bust here. His 6 plus is not bad, but no neither is it amazing. Not bad, but not amazing, just very much bog standard average. But all the other units here, the other 10, I have to say are very, very solid legends. You've got good synergy here, Cerebrals and Strikers. Very, very nice synergy here. The rate ups here, I would say this batch of units is going to go under the radar. It's going to be very underrated. But a lot of these units are super useful subs. So if you're looking for subs to go along with your OP legends, Part 3 is a very good one to look at because the Part 3 rare recruits are very, very awesome. So, damn, like all of these units are so, so good. They're just so, so good. So you're, obviously you've got Carrot and Chopper. Very good for the new batch of legends and the new batch of units. But again, if you want the new rare recruits, 
pull on part one. You've got Sengoku, who is a rainbow orb booster if your captain is quick or Sai. Very good, very, very, very good. You've got Hina, who's a two times color affinity booster, amazingly good. You've got Garp, two turns of delay, and also additional tap timing damage, which is super good as well. Marco and Dexura Hoshi, two of the best rare recruits in the game when it comes to utility. In fact, I would say they are the best rare recruits in the game right now for utility because the attack down debuff, I cannot stress right now the attack down debuff is freaking everywhere. It's like the plague. Every single piece of hard content, attack down, attack down, attack down. And every good team you see has either this Shirahoshi or it either has this Marco in it. I cannot stress how good these two rare recruits are. And then to top it off, you've got 20th anniversary Nami, the best rare recruit of the 20th anniversary batch. And then you've got Valentine's Koala, who is an awesome cerebral sub as well. Very good utility unit, gets rid of Bind and Despair, and also gives you a plus 0.7 chain boost. I mean, just yikes. We're only in the second row right now. And then you've got Beppo. Beppo is a bit of a meme. Ignore Beppo. Everyone outside of Beppo here is fantastic. Beppo still has his niche uses though. So don't just overlook him just yet. Even though I did criticize him just now, he's the worst of the batch here. But otherwise, you know, you've got Margaret, one of the best units for shooter teams, even though shooters are a dead class. She's the one that's keeping them just barely afloat with that three turns of 1.75 Orbis. You've got the Boasan, the Sonya, Marigold sisters. The Boa sisters, amazing combo. A little bit outdated now because we're beginning to see a bit more debuff back in the game now and defense debuff protection a little bit annoying but it is to counter the powerhouse meta and it's trying to move on into the color affinity meta which is what we're looking at right now with all these new color affinity boosters we're looking at the color meta basically and then we've got 20 anniversary luffy again similar captain to zora if not identical his special ability is not bad either it's it's decent it's decent but rarely sees much use crocodile who's amazing on striker teams or driven teams so if you have a strike team, you really want this crocodile. He's a 1.5 times attack boost and orb boost. And he's also got a few sailor abilities which make him here and there pretty much useful. And then you've got this Sai Kuma, amazing utility unit. You've got the Sicilian and Wanda duo, really good utility and also not utility, very good orb manipulation, attack boost and delay. Very good synergy together on the Cerebral team. Cerebrals, I can't stress enough right now are just straight up full on busted. They are so OP right now. They have so much utility, they have so many different boosts, so many conditional boosts, they have everything. They're not locked, they're literally not lacking anywhere other than for example, like a four times attack boost in Captain. Their highest attack boost in Captain is 3.5 with Rayleigh, but 3.5 is really high already. I just cannot stress enough how good this batch is. And then you've got the Anniversary Boa, who's still a solid unit. 1.75 times attack to Fighter and Free Spirit at the same time. Perfect for the new Luffy as well. And of course you've got the Reiju Anniversary, which I'm sure people will be pulling on this banner to be getting this Boa and this Reiju, the two waifus. This batch here is full of waifus and just some really OP male characters. And I just can't stress enough, part three, if you're lacking in subs guys, part three is by far, even the legends, by far the best batch to pull on. They're just stacked, it's just full on stacked, part three. The legends are amazing and the, the subs are amazing. The rare recruits are amazing. Just man, if I, if I had an empty box, I would be going in hard on part three and then part one and then part two last. Part two has the best captains in terms of damage and raw strength and power, but part three, I have to say, is the best of the best. When it comes to rare recruits, the legends are superb. Part one also has very solid legends, but, but yikes, you know, just absolute yikes on part three. Very, very good. Here are the part one rare recruits again in comparison. They're decent, you've got Neptune in there, but otherwise outside of Neptune and the new batch, the other ones are, you know, neither here or there, so. Don't worry too much about it. But overall, I know a lot of people won't be able to wait and they want to put on part one. Part one is not bad at all. You have obviously Lucy in there, you've got Judge, you've got V2 Rayleigh, and you've got the new Luffy. Four very powerful rainbow captains, although Judge, I, I, I guess three and a half very powerful rainbow captains. And you've got Frankie in there, who's semi-rainbow as well. And I guess Lucy's semi-rainbow as well. Okay, you've got two pure rainbow captains. And by pure rainbow, I mean they have no restrictions whatsoever on who they can put on their team, which is the new Luffy and the new Rayleigh. And then you've got like pseudo rainbow captains in Frankie, Judge, and Lucy there. So I actually got Akainu as well as a pure rainbow captain too. So there's that. And Kizaru, I guess. I oh, this, this Okay, day one, if you're a new player, I say day one, I mean part one. Part one, if you're a new player, 
part one is a very very good batch to pull on because it has a lot of easy to use legends in there as captains very good rainbow captains you can they're very simple and basic to use and remember guys like when i say basic i mean genuinely super basic when i first started the game i didn't know what captain abilities were i didn't know what special abilities were i used to use like my luffy team with like random units on it and I used to bring like a guest friend Captain Arlong and it gave me no boost and I was like it doesn't matter because Arlong's OP and I just didn't understand the game so for the very new players if you're watching this and you don't know anything about the game you want to be pulling on this batch with all these rated up units most of these legends will be able to carry you through the early stages of the game all the way through to the final stages of the game once you start learning about the game they'll become even stronger in your hands and then obviously the rare recruits if you pull the guy in the bottom left hand corner which is rare recruit neptune sorry wrong one there the bottom left hand corner if you pull that guy rare recruit neptune one of the best captains in the game for easy content if not the best captain in the game for easy content but otherwise outside of that i cannot stress enough that part two is only if you want the legends if you want rare recruits do not put on part two whatsoever it's a trap part two is a hundred percent a mega trap for you know the whales the mega whales and then part three is i would say the best i would say part three is definitely the best all of these legends are solid six plus sanji six plus inu six plus neko they're all still available and they can all get a massive buff ace is really the only bust here shirohoshi arguably the best sub in the game kuzan arguably one of the best subs in the game inu Arashi, if he gets a six plus is insane his captain ability superbly underrated is actually like a 3.25 to a 3.5 times attack boost approximately with that chain boost so yeah, I, I would recommend part 3, honestly, guys. I don't know if you guys can wait out that long, but the subs on part 3 are super duper OP. So, without further ado, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that's been helpful to you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Team part 3, even though I've got everything on part 3, so I'm going to be pulling on part 2. I salute team part 3. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.